Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and um, something I've been thinking about lately for at least a week, maybe longer, really put some thought into, and I went ahead and decided I'm going to go ahead and do it, and that's I'm going to switch back over to, for the rest of this cut, I'm going to switch back over to full body training three days a week, uh, which has kind of been my bread and butter, what I promoted for years when I wasn't promoting Bulgarian training or some concurrent style training. It's been what I promoted for the majority of people the majority of the time. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, work on skill of my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. All right, guys, um, you know, what we've got to think about when it comes to training, as much as I might really think certain styles are ideal for certain things, uh, like, again, daily heavy lifting, I think it's fantastic for peaking strength. I think you can gain size on it. I feel that I did gain some size on it. Um, and, you know, I actually made fantastic strength gains on it, right? You guys saw what I hit at the peak of the training, but as I started cutting further into it, as I lost body weight, it really became more and more difficult to sustain this style of training. And ultimately what I've realized, what I'm gonna have to do, I've gotta lose a lot more body fat. I've gotta lose a lot more body weight. And I need my training to be conducive uh, to doing that, being conducive to me dieting around it. And one of the things I've been thinking about, and I think guys like Martin Burkham are really right. I'm going to give a nod of respect there. Uh, my observations over the years, plus when you look at the science behind it and everything, uh, guys like Martin promote training three days a week. You know, three days a week, and a lot of it has to do with the ability to maintain body composition, particularly for losing fat, because it allows lower calories on your non-training days. They can fast longer on the non-training days, because uh, that's one of the problems I'm running into. Like, I've noticed on the weekends... Uh, all through the, even the weight loss phases, even when I was training six days a week, when I would take Sunday off, I would fast till like noon, one o'clock, and it really made my diet adherence fantastic on my off days from training. Um, whereas in when I'm training five or six days a week, I do have to go ahead and eat breakfast early. I do have to get quite a bit of calories in before I train in order to fuel my training. You know, then it's like trying to get in the food afterwards. It's like, I feel like it's much harder for me to create a calorie deficit where it's easy for me to just sustain it uh, in, in terms of the overall week. And I feel like for me, I'm at a point to where I know how to structure full body training. Uh, I know how to organize everything into three days. And I think you guys will be surprised the direction I kind of go with it. But yeah, I'm probably going to do five lifts. So I'm not going to pull any of this strong lifts where we just do three exercises for some sets of five. Uh, I'm probably going to do around five exercises if I don't throw any additional fluff or something in, like some cheek curls or face pulls or something. I'll probably do five big exercises every one of my workouts, and they're going to be for, obviously, multiple sets. So I think the reason I want to do it that way has to do with my ability to organize my diet more around it, because right now I, I realize fat loss and maximizing body composition really need to be a primary goal for me. Uh, and yes, that's even when I'm thinking about it in terms of being a strength athlete. That's a big part of it. I have a lot of body fat still to lose, you know, to really be ideal. To be ideal even from a competitive strength perspective. And so I feel like, again, really all the heavy daily training is interfering. I'm noticing it's harder to recover. I've noticed I start to feel beat up. I've started to feel beat up. Uh, and I feel like I can't go as hard as I would like some days because of that. Whereas in if, I, if I have 48 hours between every workout, I feel like I can go really hard, get in a decent amount of volume, really put in so, some serious workload, and then I can chill. And what this will do for me is give me four days every week to where I can be in a calorie deficit, right? I can be in a calorie deficit. <clears throat> I can focus on just a lot of protein and vegetables. I can fast on those mornings do some, a little bit of intermittent fasting, again, for overall dietary adherence. And people need to understand that. When I make these videos talking about intermittent fasting, it's not that I don't think it's a great tool. I do think it's a great tool. I think it doesn't have magical properties outside of dietary adherence. But it does work for that. You know, it does work for that. I wouldn't recommend it for people trying to maximize muscle gain. It's going to interfere. Uh, but the ability to have four days a week to where... I can go till noon because I get up at four to six in the morning, go till noon before I eat and then protein load all those days. And then only have three days where I need to come in and carb up in the morning before I train, carb up post-workout, not even be in a calorie deficit my training days because that's the beauty of it. You know, people need to remember we gain and lose muscle every week. Whether you're bulking or cutting, you both gain and lose muscle mass every week. 
is an ebb and flow to it. It's all about what's the net at the end. I can have three days where I focus on my performance, I focus on the workload, I focus on recovery, so get plenty of carbs before I train, plenty of carbs after I train, uh, maybe hit calorie maintenance, maybe even a, even a tiny surplus some of those days, it doesn't matter. And then have four days to where I have a pretty significant calorie deficit and I don't have to worry about training. And, you know, the question would become, well, you know, you're going to eat less on those days. How's it going to deal with appetite? Well, I think if I'm fasting and then I focus on protein as my primary calorie source on those days, in other words, 50, 60 percent or more of my calories coming from protein. Uh, and I only have a relatively narrow eating window on those days. I don't think adherence is going to be an issue. Uh, again, I've noticed that messing around with it a little bit on the weekends already. Uh, it, it actually works pretty decent for me and it's been working for, for weight loss and fat loss thus far and I think kind of taking it to that point is, is really the point of it you know because again ultimately training does require your nutrition to be on point to fuel it and recover from it so I tell guys don't do stupid stuff like train fasted you're gonna have to eat around uh, your training windows you know if you really want to get the most out of your training so essentially I can have three days every week to where I'm gonna gain muscle while I'm recovering that evening. I'll have plenty of food on those days for both training, uh, so basically fuel and recovery. And then the other four days, uh, I, can work, I can fast, I can just protein load, and then have four days that are pretty well dedicated to fat loss every single week. And I think that's gonna be my best approach for me at this point for retaining muscle mass. You know, again, fairly, fairly decently high volume, full body sessions, focus around big lifts. Um, I'll probably mess with 3x5, very similar to like my cutting version of my novice program, not quite that exercise selection, and I'm just going to have to break down what lifts I want to do, how I want to break them down, uh, what I want to ease back down, because I do want to make sure every single thing is being trained, uh, and I want just enough exercise variety to maybe get a little bit of novel training effect. Uh, you know, again, lifts I haven't done a lot of lately, and I can focus on the performance of a handful of lifts. Uh, and, and try to stay as strong as I can on those lifts and give myself plenty of carbs in the morning before I train, plenty of carbs to recover, and I probably won't even eat much of any carbs on my, my off days. And I know that sounds counterintuitive in a lot of ways, but I don't necessarily need the training fuel on those days. Uh, and I can focus on, like I said, mainly protein. And you see guys like Birkin and a lot of these other guys promoting stuff like that. It's been very successful for them. It's been successful for a lot of people they work with. And me having experimented thus far with what I'm doing, I think, I think I'll be able to utilize a tool like that. And if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But I think I'm going to go ahead and experiment with it. You guys can kind of follow me on the journey. The workouts will still be filmed. So we're going to see a slightly different variation of what's going on with the training. It's going to be a little bit different than it has been. And, and I think what people need to understand with this is it's not good. There are people who say, oh, Jason's flip-flop. I'm not flip-flopping. I have basically promoted three types of training in the entirety of my, my YouTube career. And I basically just cycled through those three depending on different phases. I promoted full body three day a week. I promoted kind of like concurrent upper lower four day a week splits. You know, if you want to loosely pattern them upper or lower, you know, again, with either like lift mastery or concurrent training, concurrent periodization, and I've promoted Bulgarian style training. All right, those are generally the only three types of training you're going to see me really approve of for the most part. Um, and to basically have cycled through and recommended those three styles of training for the most part for myself and what I've always done. Uh, over the course of what the six years I've been on YouTube, I don't think that's flip flopping. That's rotating through the same three things. And what people need to remember this daily lifting stuff, I did it for seven months straight. What is it that I always tell people? If you're going to do something, do it at least six months. I don't believe in any of this try something out for a month. No, you need, any training system you're going to do, I generally believe you need to run it out for at least two 12 week cycles, right? That's, that's how I usually feel about a program. program should be run at least six months. Well, I pretty much did seven months of daily lifting. I did six months of pretty much Bulgarian, really, if you want to call it that. A Bulgarian light power lifter Bulgarian. Six months of it. Six months of it. Uh, my strength got pretty good at the peak of it. So now what I'm going to do, go back, focus on body composition for a while. So a lot of fives on full body. And... 
get to a much lighter body weight. And let's see if I can go back and repaint my strength again after, but with 40 pounds less body weight. How would that, that would be interesting. If I could be 40 pounds lighter than I was during a lot of the Bulgarian training and, you know, again, regain the muscle, use muscle memory for any muscle I lose during the fat loss, uh, try to retain it the best I can using, again, some full body training three day a week, then go back, try some peaking again with a Bulgarian style training again and see if I can reach those same numbers again at a much, much lighter body weight just by having the same muscle mass. And again, doing the singles to practice. That'd be interesting. So I, I want to try that. Let's see if we can make this work. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.